Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am your host, Johan, and we have another episode of Car Tech TV. Today, we're gonna to be working on a 2017 Toyota Sequoia 4x4. To make this vehicle run a little better, we are going to be adding some new rotors, some new pads, and a TRD sway bar. In Australia, there is a very reputable company called DBA, and that stands for Disc Brakes Australia. They're not drilled, they're just slotted, and we got some good Hawk light truck pads. These are gonna be some of the best in the business. Link in the description below if you wanna check out either of these. And gonna have a couple helpers with me today. The kids like working on vehicles, so they're outside right now setting up all our jack stands and uh, jacks and getting us ready. Doing TRD sway bar, it comes off of the TRD Pros and uh, it weighs about 33 pounds compared to the 17 pound normal one. It will be a bolt on part, should be relatively easy to change. Just drop the skid plate underneath the vehicle and go ahead and swap this out. If you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button down below so that you can stay up to date on all things cars, tech, and TV. All right, let's get at it. While we're down there, we might as well do the brakes. So. What do we got, guys? What are we working on? Uh, sway bar and brakes. All right, let's go, Lauren. This is the snow trooper. Oh, I need to bring it that way. Sure. These boys are doing their best. Okay, that's they seem to know bring what they're up. doing, so we're going to let them do it. Okay. So here you go. There's the part. It is a PTR62, but it is a 2008 to 2020. TRD sway bar for a Sequoia. Check under here to see where these boys are jacking the car up from, and that is definitely from the frame, so we're good there. What's a good way to get some extra leverage on that? There you go. Boom. All right. Always inspect everything as you're in here. Make sure that everything looks good. You don't have any leaking parts. You can see these ball uh, upper control arm ball joints are covered in mung. They're pretty nasty up here, so something's been leaking out of these. Again, we're gonna check these pads here, see how they look. There's not much there, so it's a good thing that we're changing these out. A couple tools we're gonna need. We got 14, 15, 17, and 19 mil wrenches for taking off the caliper there. We got a 10 mil up there. The boys are disconnecting the negative from the battery socket. We're gonna use impact wrench to take stuff off underneath the car to get the sway bar out. And yeah, so as you see here, we have these end links that we're gonna need to take care of. Sway bar bushing holders right there that we need to take off. All right. You can finish that off with the, uh, with the screw gun. So do crack the next one. Okay, it's cracked. All right, good. Move on. Basically, whenever you do this, you want to make sure that the right parts go back to the right location. Otherwise, it will not work. How we take it off is we have to take it, uh, a wrench like this and put it on there. And then we have to put an Allen wrench inside of it. Getting some progress. Yeah, we did it! Hopefully. So normally you would have to like do some PB blaster or something to loosen up the rust on these things. But looks like we may have just cracked the case. All right. So you just start wrenching on that. Yep. If you look at this side, it looks like it's in the right spot, but you always want to examine because as you see here, there's a slight difference. What's the difference, Mr. Helper Man? On this bolt, it is on the inside of this piece and you don't want to have it switched around. Got it, so that needs to stay on the outside, whereas here, you can see this stop here, we're on the inside. So, helper number two, can you uh, pull that out and get it back over? Outside of the nut. Heavy. And we gotta make sure that these are gonna go 
go in here properly. All right, TRD sway bar is in with the help of my little helper man here. And we're gonna put that skid plate back up and then we are onto the brakes. So here we are. We're gonna go ahead and just do a quick visual inspection to make sure that these are the same size, same deck height, everything. They look and appear to be the same. All right, so we got this side done relatively easy. These guys actually have their own patented kangaroo paw design inside the brake that allows them to that allows them to dissipate the heat better through design and the way that the air flows through them as well as they're one of the only companies that actually makes their own alloys for their brakes. These weren't too expensive, but they were definitely a premium brake. They're definitely gonna be worth it though. They have heat markings, they, they're painted. Everything about these is a serious upgrade and uh, hopefully the stopping power will be better. So as you can see, we got them on. It's time to do the rest. One, two, three, up. So back at it for day two. We are gonna to continue to work on the brakes on the Sequoia here. Um, we're doing a set of DBA rotors all the way around as well as Hawk pads from their light truck series. If you have any questions about how to bed in your brakes, they actually have it right on the bottom of the box and uh, it's gonna be different for each actual brake pad manufacturer. Now you wanna base this off of the pads, not necessarily the rotors. So be sure to follow the instructions for the Hawk stuff. Now for the uninitiated, you need to torque down your wheels to 75 to 100 foot pounds of torque to be able to get them to a manufacturer's rating. But as you can see here, these get put on a lot harder than that from the gentlemen that work on tires. So sometimes you need to actually stand on them to get them to break loose. So just keep in mind that's about how much pressure you're going to need to get them off and how much to put them on. It's very, very tough. Sometimes you got to use a breaker bar. If that is not working, there's another trick that you can use. That extra trick, take the bar off of your jack and slip it onto this yourself an extra foot of leverage and a bigger bar and move some of this weight out here and look at that it goes like butter there you go you want to do this before you get it up in the air because you do not want to rely on your e-brake or your crank pin up front to be holding that tire always loosen these crack these before you lift it up off the ground quick tip breaker bar part of the jack just a quick release on most jacks, so we'll just put this back in here. A couple of quick tips. Obviously, use jack stands. Use professional jack stands. Don't get the garbage ones or something that's old or bent. As well as, when you get it jacked up, leave the jack in place as a third point of security. Basically, what I'll do is I'll wait for the jack to drop, just as you can see right there. Tighten it back up. Just go to its tense, and then give one more pump on it. Now it's a third point that's holding us up. One of the things that I've done to this vehicle is I've actually swapped out the tires twice. The uh, original Dunlop SP5000s that came on this vehicle were garbage. They lasted maybe 10,000 miles. And I ended up purchasing a set of 20s off of a Tundra and they came with Bridgestone Duelers. And uh, those are a pretty good tire. They're 20 inch tires. And those come on the non-TRD vehicles. So the original stock 20s on the Sequoia are the same size as these. Maybe they weigh a little bit different, but they should be the same. But these are 18s. And I want to know if the TRD Pros are gonna be any better in weight than these. The way to do that, first and foremost, is to use a scale. 79.8 for the 20 inchers. All right, now for the Michelin 18s. Wow, significantly lighter. Look at that. As you can see, the 
Michelin's weigh a good almost eight to 10 pounds lighter with the 18 inch wheels than the 20s. So we should get some better performance out of them. They do say that the gas mileage is slightly better with the 18s. So with that and the TRD sway bar, we should have some increased performance on the road. Down here, this is a two piece caliper in the rear here. Normally if you were just doing the brake pads, you could do these two 15 mil bolts or 17 mil bolts, excuse me, pop those off but because we have to take this actual rotor out, this entire casing and piece needs to come out. So that's actually the two 19 mil bolts in the rear to start with. This is a spot to adjust the e-brake. So if you rotate that all the way down, you'll actually be able to get to the adjustment knob down here and you can turn them with a screwdriver or something like that. As you look over here, we have tools, we got gloves, we got lubricant, we got C-clamps to expand the calipers we have some zip ties to actually tie this up in place once you get it pulled off that way it doesn't snag or do any potential damage to the brake lines so now it's a good idea to maybe uh, take your camera and take some detailed photos of this or get your camera up in there so you know exactly what you're looking at how the tabs go in, how the brake pads shim out, those types of things. So as you can see, what I've done is I've actually put this little bolt here. There's a couple spots on the rotor that are actually threaded so you can actually get this in there. And then once you get this going in, it's gonna be able to pop this off and out. All right, so once you screw this in a little bit, it'll actually allow this to slide off. And as we're back here, be sure to inspect your braking system. This is the emergency brake pad. Plenty of dust in there. Be sure not to hit the friction surfaces with anything. Materials from your gloves, just be very careful. Obviously, it's good for visual inspection and take a look, make sure that everything is working well. There it goes. Now it's moving. So as you can see here, I'm actually taking the C-clamp and I'm compressing the piston in the rear end so that there's more room for my new pads. This is a very important step and you, you can get a tool that'll do it, but generally speaking, any C-clamp will work. Quick tip, be sure to go and pull the cap off of your brake fluid system so that it can actually send the fluid back into the system. There will be some shims that stay in here. Just go ahead and leave them unless your uh, new brake system comes with them. Fairly common for most Toyotas is that they will have a tab on one side of the pads and you just need to be able to remember which way this goes so that you can get your new pads back in properly. Also, it's a good idea to lubricate your piston surface in here with some of that uh, ceramic silicone grease just to make sure that uh, it doesn't squeak or that it keeps the rubber uh, in shape so it doesn't dry out and crack. Also, change your gloves before you put your brakes on. Before I change my gloves though, grab a quick bit of this brake lubricant and spread it around in here. Just trying to touch all the uh, rubber piston surfaces to kind of give them a little bit of a, uh, a bath in some petroleum products that will help them stay fresh. These pads, which all appear to be identical, have the same part numbers on them and everything, do not have the shims on them. It's pretty much the only way it can go on. That bad boy can slide back in there. Be sure to grease up the end before you do that. All right, so we're gonna shift gears a little bit here. We're gonna take these two 17 mil bolts off first. It's the piece that allows this single piston caliper to slide back and forth. They're basically like pins that run through and this will allow us to get to access to the brake pad. So we're gonna remove those and then remove the entire caliper system with the 19 mil bolts. It'll just be easier in the long run. This is what those slide pins look like. Notice that they have grease on them. We're gonna to wanna to clean those up and put new grease back on there. See, this pen is completely dry versus this one, which is dark and discolored. It's as if this one didn't have any oil to gather or, I don't know, this one's, this isn't even really oil. It's 
some sort of sludge that's gotten in there. So it'll be a good idea to get in here and clean this. You can see that there's still some on the end here though. This is good grease, but we're gonna just go ahead and re reapply grease to that. Now, once that is done, I don't know if you can see it, but this chunk of the caliper here that houses the brake pads should be able to just come off, and set itself out of the way. Quick tip, I noticed that you can actually hook this underneath the lower spring and it will stay in place for you like so now before i get too far along i do need to uh open that caliper up which is what the c-clamp is for wind it out it's just shoving the fluid back through the line and up into the system be sure to take off your brake fluid cap so that the fluid has somewhere to go throughout the system obviously make sure that this is all done leave the e-brake off and you should be good to go. Okay, so now we're gonna need a 19 mil to get these bigger ones off. I find that if you don't have any room for a breaker bar, you can actually loosen them with a mallet to the point where you can get them to spin off. Those are your bolts. They are identical, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up. Trooper. Initial impressions for the upgrades that we've done are pretty, pretty good. The TRD sway bar makes a huge difference. Like the immediate turn in on the freeway is huge. I can get this vehicle to go where it needs to go immediately. Perfect example of a high speed turn where previously this would have been a wallowy truck and now it's so much better especially with the 18 inch wheels, the TRD wheels. This is a perfect complement to them because they used to be a little wallowy. They used to make you lean as you turn the vehicle. So this is a much, much safer, more stable and better setup. DBA rotors and new Hawk pads. What are my impressions? Well, immediately the pads have more room, meaning I have more travel in my foot to be able to actually manipulate the brakes so at low speeds they're grabbing more bite with just a little bit of press uh, so that's definitely good um, hot pads we've bent them in properly so we're just making sure that they are uh, good brakes let them heat up and cool down a couple cycles and then left them to cool down for 15 minutes and now they certainly work cast rotors kind of garbage on this vehicle they uh, get chewed through pretty quickly I mean it's a heavy view so Everyone seems to say that upgrading the brakes on this thing is a major improvement, and I would have to agree. So it turns better, handles better, corners better, stops better, less brake fade, no more wobble, bigger tires, chunkier for going off-road, so the TRD versus the regular 20s in the uh, Sequoia, definitely worth it. I would like to mention that also the 18-inch tires were about 8 pounds per position lighter so with the 20 inch tires and the 20 inch rims and more meat on the Michelin ATX2s I actually ended up cutting about eight pounds per corner on this vehicle so definitely the TRD upgrades are worth it. As a final note for all of this work that we've done one of the biggest benefits that you're going to find these 18 inch Michelins are actually quieter than the Bridgestone cooler highway tires that I had. Uh, both came stock on a Tundra or a Sequoia, and these 18s are just much quieter on the road. And now that they're not wobbling around as I drive, they're definitely a better fit for this vehicle with that new sway bar.